Welcome everyone to selfprincipal.org. For those of you guys who've been following along, you've seen a lot of the really exciting data on intermittent fasting. In fact, it's one of those things where the data is starting to get stronger and stronger. And I know a lot of people are trying different varieties of it. But here's an interesting question. Is there a problem with intermittent fasting? Let's take a look at a really interesting study to see what are the problems that can occur so you understand them and you know how to overcome them. Now, before we get started, it's important to understand the background. As we know, obesity has a ton of medical complications associated with it. There's cancers, there's heart disease, there's type 2 diabetes, there's fatty liver, there's pulmonary disease, there's kidney disease, and a whole host of other things that are linked to having excess weight. So having a sustainable solution that will help you to lose weight is a really powerful thing. So in comes intermittent fasting. Now, there's a few varieties and you want to know about them. There's the alternate day, which is what we're going to talk about today. That's essentially fasting one day, eating the next day. On your fasting day, you're consuming beverages that don't have calories and so forth. And then, of course, on your regular eating days, you can eat regularly. Then there's the modified fasting type, which is really eating about 20 to 25% on fasting days. And on non-fasting days, you can eat normally. A sub variation of that is really the five and two fasting where you fast for two non consecutive days. So for example, you could eat on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, you fast, eat on Thursday and Friday, Saturday, you fast and so forth. And then finally, there's my favorite, which is time restricted feeding. And essentially, it's a lot easier to stick to because you're forming a habit. All you're doing is reducing your eating window from your standard eating from morning till sunset to reducing it to about a six to eight hour period. And the data is actually quite powerful. Now, in the literature, the eating periods are six to 10 hours, and that's the effectiveness. Most people, they do it between six to eight hours. All right, so what's the research behind intermittent fasting? Is it effective? The answer is yes. It's not that it's effective for weight, it's that it affects it for your whole body. It lowers your total cholesterol, it lowers fatty liver, it lowers inflammatory gene uh, progression. So what it's doing is it's lowering inflammation in the body. It lowers cell proliferation, so it's lowering the risk of things like cancer. But in human studies where they've compared it to just calorie restriction, the results have been similar. So in other words, weight was similar, fasting insulin was similar, and even glucose concentration was similar to simply cutting down your calories. But just because the weight was similar doesn't mean that intermittent fasting isn't better. It is because it affects so many different aspects of longevity. It affects so many different aspects of our body's ability to do autophagy or clean out the old and cells that are no longer functioning optimally. As we talk about fasting, it's important to understand the basic mechanism of fasting. Essentially, as your blood sugars start to go down, your insulin also starts to go down, and your body looks at it and starts to produce more glucagon. Now, with that glucagon, you get release of fatty acids from the liver. You also get this surge of catecholamines. And essentially, all they're doing is, is these are things like epinephrine and norepinephrine, and what they do is they help to break down fat. This is the same effect that occurs when you exercise as the sugars goes down, you have a sympathetic release, and you're also breaking down fat. Now, keep in mind that there are certain fats like white fat or white adipose tissue, they're gonna release hormones like adiponectin, which whole purpose is really to allow those tissues to be able to take up the extra sugar we're creating by breaking down all of these stores. So touching upon fats, it's important for us to understand that there's really a couple of varieties with a couple of subcategories. So there's the white fat and the brown fat. Of course, as we get older, the brown fat really goes to a minimal amount. We have seen that some fats can be converted to brown fat. Now then there's the white fat. Now it comes in two varieties. And the one that you really want to be concerned about is the visceral fat. This is the type of fat that leads to things like insulin resistance, obesity, cardiovascular disease, cancer, increases your risk of death. So that's why visceral fat is so concerning. The one that most people talk about though is the subcutaneous fat or the one under the skin. Turns out that one is actually not that harmful for you. So let's take a look at this interesting study that was published in Cell Reports and see what is some of the concerns around fasting, especially prolonged fasting and what happens. 
Well, it turns out in this particular trial, what they were looking at, and this was done on animal models specifically, in adult mice, what they did was they had them do every other day fasting, and they were looking for what happens to their proteins during that process. And they allowed these mice to eat whatever they wanted, and then they studied over 8,500 proteins to see what was increasing, what was decreasing. Their control group was mice that were allowed to eat a regular diet and no restrictions. So what they found was actually quite interesting. On the negative part, there were two things that are important. First, surprisingly, what they saw was there was increase in fat production. Now, fatty acid synthesis was actually increasing in visceral and subcutaneous fat with every other day fasting. Part of the reason that the authors thought that was because it's a preserving mechanism. The body feels like, oh my God, I'm starving. What do I do to preserve the energy stores I have? So it's actually trying to do the opposite of what you want it to do. It's trying to build more fat. And the other part of this was the visceral fat, which is the one that's the most dangerous. It actually had a fourfold decrease in this protein called ADRB3. And what the protein is really important for is it's needed to break down fat. So you have a fourfold reduction in the protein that breaks down your fat stores simply by doing fasting every other day. Once again, what's the body trying to do? It's trying to preserve itself in case it's not going to have food for a while. So it wants to make sure any calories it gets, it stores them as fat and uses them for a rainy day. Now on the flip side though, there were some really positive things with every other day fasting. One was there was an increase in uncoupling protein one. And this was seen in the subcutaneous fat. Now remember, uncoupling proteins, what they do is they decrease insulin resistance, they decrease obesity, and they decrease metabolic disease. So having an increase in uncoupling protein one is actually a good thing as seen with fasting. The other thing was there was a decrease in extracellular matrix proteins. Now this matters because as these ECM or extracellular matrix proteins increase, you get scarring, you get increased insulin resistance, and that has all sorts of effects. With every other day fasting though, you saw a decrease in these proteins, and this leads to a decrease in inflammation, and of course helps to improve insulin sensitivity. So if you're watching this and you're wondering, well, what's the take home? A few things. First, visceral fat becomes resistant to fatty acid release during fasting. It's trying to preserve itself. And you want to understand that, that the whole concept here is, is it wants to hold on to the fat in case there's another bout of starvation. The other thing is, is if you look at people who go on diets for a long time, you can see the body tries to preserve. So the second they go off on a diet, they actually store more fat than they did before they started diet. And this is why yo-yo dieting never works. And this is why if you're going to do intermittent fasting, find a plan that you can stick for the long haul. And lastly, it would be really great to have some more research to see, does this whole concept of your fat stores fighting back against you from breaking down more fat, does this apply to other types of fasting? Does this apply to time-restricted feeding? Does this apply to the five and two fasting? What about the role of exercise? Can exercise overcome your body's defense mechanism? In other words, can exercise stop your body from trying to hold on to fat? Very interesting research questions. And as the studies come out, as always, we'll present them to you right here on selfprincipal.org. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and please go ahead and share this. And I would love to hear your comments below.